Today we're going to troubleshoot a Kenmore gas dryer. This is a 600 series, but I mean this is going to work for almost all gas dryers. I'm sure they'll all be a little bit different, but the whole concept is going to be the same. So what happens is it'll run, it'll spin and everything, it just won't heat up. And there's a little tab down here that you can take off. You pop it off where that notch is right here pop this off and then you can look in here while it's spinning and there should be a glow and there's no glow so there's something preventing the igniter from getting warm and it could be multiple things and that's what we're going to go run through right now so the first thing is going to be to unplug it and then we're going to go in the back and uh, take off this back thing right here now we're behind the dryer, and what you're going to do is get a nut driver. This nut driver is a quarter inch, and um, you take off, there's nine of these, and they go just around the dryer. You're going to actually also have to take off, there's a hose that runs from here out into the back that lets all the dryer fumes out. I already took that off, I mean that's self-explanatory. But then you unscrew all these these bolts here. I have one left. So and then this piece is gonna want to come off. So just kind of pull it back like that. And it's just a plate that covers the electronics back here. And then slide this off. Be careful, this has sharp edges on it, surprisingly. Very sharp. And I'm gonna just put this on the other side of the dryer. With that back removed. I'll give you a little rundown of how this works. So here's where the gas comes in. And then it goes out to the front, which I'll show you next. Or I'll probably show you this in another video. Because um, I think I'm going to be able to find my problem back here. So then the gas goes into the front and it gets ignited. And that's where that uh, glow is coming from. The glow ignites it almost like a spark plug. Or in this case, it's more like a glow stick on a diesel engine. But anyway. It ignites it, and then the, the heat travels into here, and this goes into the the dryer. You can see that's that hole right there with the little uh, little holes in there are exactly into the dryer, and then it heats the clothes to dry them. So now there's a few things here. There's thermostats here, and um, these are like fail safes. So if it gets too hot, the thermostat breaks connection, so there's no continuity, and um, and then that'll that'll prevent any gas from from getting ignited. Um, there's a thermostat here. So after the it goes in, and heats it, it goes out through here. Another thermostat, and then out into the outside of the house. So we're gonna go check out all the thermostats right now, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna use a multimeter. This is actually an, uh, a multimeter because it has different functions on it. You could also use an ohm meter, same difference. We're going to change it to ohms. And you want to change it to the lowest setting, in this case 200. So we're going to put it on 200. And when you touch metal to metal, watch what happens. It creates a circuit. So those numbers moving creates a circuit and tells you the resistance. When the circuit's broken, it goes back to 1. So we're going to be checking the continuity of our thermostats. So we're going to check these thermostats first. Then we're going to check this thermal fuse. Then we're going to check this thermostat here. And that's going to be all the stuff we're going to check in the back to see if uh, any of these have a broken circuit. What we're going to want to see is we're going to want to see the, the ohm meter that I just showed you change to a certain resistance. So we want it to go from 1 the way it's set up right now and we want it to change so that it's showing that there's a, a, a closed circuit. We want it to change like that. If it, we touch the metal together and it doesn't change and it stays like that, that means we found the problem. So the first one we're going to do these up here. So you just wiggle these off. You actually don't have to wiggle both of them off but um, I'm going to just to make sure it's fail safe because right now the connection is uh, is open there shouldn't be any continuity 
but just to be safe. Red is on top, black is on bottom. So I'm touching the black to the bottom, red to the top. And it is good. See how it's changing? That means that the, the circuit is closed. And this is working properly. So now put the red back on, put the black back on, and take off the bottom ones. In this case, the bottom one, the black was on top, and the red was on bottom. So then I'm touch the ohmmeter together, and it's changing, see? Ready watch goes from one to a closed circuit, okay? So these two are good. So those thermostats are good. The next one we're going to check is this right here. I already took off the, the wires. But uh, plus these are kind of hard to get off. You have to use a screwdriver just to prime off a little bit. So now we're going to check this. This is the thermal fuse. This will usually blow when your exhaust vent is really dirty. Or when it's just old. Um, so now I'm going to touch these two together. Just like that. Okay. And, well, there's our problem. That should have, that should be a closed circuit, and it's open. So the thermal fuse blew. So that's one problem. Let's go take that off right now. And this is what the thermal fuse looks like. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the problem. But I'll show you how to troubleshoot the rest of it. So. Now we want to move that away. We want to test this one, and we're going to test from here to here. Here's what this thermostat looks like, and we want to test this to this. So we'll just take off the top one and touch the top here to the bottom. Okay, so you see how they're, they're both touching top to bottom, and we have it change from one See, this is what it was, and it changes. So that means that this is good. So I think our problem is the thermal fuse. Okay, so we're going to compare the two fuses. There's the old fuse. It's not changing, which means that the circuit is broken. And let's see the new fuse. And there you go. It's changing, which means the circuit's closed because it's new. It should be should be good. It's always good to test anyway because sometimes you get broken stuff and then you really mess up your your process of trying to figure out what's broken. So this is a new thermal fuse and we'll put it in. Very simple. Get your screw. All you do is take it at an angle, push it, kind of snaps in a little bit. And screw it in. That's it. Okay, so here are the the two. And it really doesn't matter which order you put these on, because it's just making a connection. Make sure they slid in. Good. So now I think we just fixed it and we'll just put it back together. And after we put this back together, we will see if it runs. So one reason why a thermal fuse might go bad is because it overheats, and it overheats because this is all dirty. So you want to make sure you vacuum this out. The other reason why is because it could become crimped, like ours did. So this became crimped because when you push this back in, it, it bends weirdly. So I'm actually going to cut this right now, right here, so that it's shorter. And uh, so there's no crimp. So this is now on. I didn't push it all the way in yet, just to make sure this is the problem. I just plugged it in. I want to set it to... Um, time dry, just whatever to, to get it running. Uh, high heat, and turn it on. Oh, you see how that's glowing? That, that means that uh, it's gonna ignite, so that means that's working. Oh, you heard that? Good, now you can see the flames. It works now. Awesome. 
You heard that little click? That's your uh, your solenoids in there, which are see that black thing right there, which are also prone to failure. And I'll show you how to to change that in another video. Um, the only way you can tell if those are bad is if you don't hear that click. And I'll show you how to troubleshoot by taking the front off in another video, and the link to that video will be up in the top left hand corner. But that's how you fix a gas dryer. If any questions, feel free to comment below and subscribe if you want more how-tos.